And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my brother as always, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. We are back once again, oh, the, the, up, in, up until, up until a fair bit in the future, we, we will still be doing these recorded, but if all goes in, if all goes as planned, by the end of this month, that might change. Assuming I don't get screwed over again. Cause... Don't speak it or it becomes true, monk. There. There we go. I don't have any salt to toss over my shoulder because I don't put salt on anything. That's because uh, you mine it from other people. Uh, right now, kind of cold for other people to be approaching. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nobody wants to work the salt mines when it's co when it's cold out. Also, it snowed today, because old man winter doesn't want to leave. Minnesota, that figures. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we, it's been a, it's, it's been a fair while before since we've since we've done a good old fashioned roasting of an individual or an entity when it comes to games. Um, and I know some might say, well, if you want to roast, why don't you why don't you roast Bethesda? We roasted the Unholy Trinity for the better part of three years. Not to mention we addressed Bethesda's most recent failures when we did the Exodus trilogy. Mm -hmm. And beyond, the, beyond that, with, with the Unholy Quartet, we've... There's a, it's one of those things that we when we were doing the old format, we had already covered plenty. There's, mm -hmm. no, there's no need at this point. I've done all I want to do with that, so that'd be beating a dead horse. But fortunately, there are other horses to beat because there's been a recent one that it that is a case of I'd li I'd like to be able to cast judgment on their games if they if actually they had <laughs> any. Yeah, this is where I'd put their games if they had any. Oh, lost the happy. Oh, the happy's back. <laughs> and okay, I know some of you might say, "Well, they've got one of them." Yeah, with a big fucking asterisk to the point where you need a ass for that asterisk. Because this name. week on the chopping block, we have Amazon Game Studios, or as I call them, the Mirage of Game Development. It's all an illusion. Now, I know that they've rebranded themselves as just Amazon Games, but they, but this was this was their big this was their big attempt as a foray to break into game development, and you know how the Stadia was our whipping boy for years on end, because you had since a bunch it was of announced. People... Oh yeah, since it, we were cautious when it was announced. But when but when it actually came out, our attitude was, our expectations for you were low. But holy fuck! Don't you love a half second of input lag? I press the spacebar and lift my hand to to present the screen, and then the character jumps. Don't you love a half second of input lag in a twitchy ass game like Doom Eternal, <laughs> which they said could run at native 4K? Until until Digital Foundry came out and was like, "You fucking liar! You can't do that, and we have proof." Mm hmm. But the Stadia is not our object of scorn today. No. Oh no. Our object of scorn is Amazon Game Studios. Now, for about two thirds of their lifespan, a lot of the stuff that they were doing were large were largely. Um, apps for their tablets, which is what, which is why I didn't cover, which is why it's only been in the last few years that people have even covered them because it 
Because when it comes to app games, who the fuck cares? Remember, people, mobile games aren't real games. Mm -hmm. Just li just like how bubble tea isn't real tea. I'm not getting on, on that one. I've never had it because I don't like tapioca. Oh, I got somebody. I got some people really pissed off when I said that. <laughs> oh, good. More people. Get back in line. Um, including one person who claimed that I've that I've now pissed off the entire nation of Thailand by saying that, to which I say, and? This means less ladyboys for Monk to worry about. I don't even, I don't even do, I don't even do that kind of thing. The only, oh, does this, oh, it all, the worst that it means is that I'm going to be banned from penis restaurants. <laughs> No, thank you. I don't, I'm not even taking that joke. No, thank you. Phrasing. I know what I said. <laughs> but the funny thing, you know, there's there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a fallacy in professional sports. That if you just throw in, if you just throw a shitload of money at top players, then you can then you can buy your way into a championship. This is not true. As the Washington as the Washington commies now have de had demonstrated plenty of times back in the '90s, where they tried grabbing all grabbing a bunch of all stars. And thinking that that would be be a surefire win, way to win a championship. Nope, they ended up they ended up being mediocre. And well, you're I remember the reactions that you had when I showed you Tree's video regarding some of the contracts with the Maple Leafs. Mm -hmm. Especially the one that meant that managed to go have him go so WTF that he had to do a um, clear joke. Yep. Just be just because of just because of the ridiculous amount of money that was getting thrown around and nothing happening. And the reason I bring this kind of thing up is because when you look at the people who were involved with Amazon's big push into legitimate game development, there's no there's there is not a lack of talent. They they had here's some here's some of the names that they had that they had recruited. Back in 2014, Kim Swift of Portal, Clint Hawking of Far Cry 2, and as well as a bunch of X System Shock 2 developers. And it sounds like a sounds like it's some sort of um unholy recipe for success, but your team has to work well together. Mm -hmm. Um. They also want. They also were pitching the idea of, of um, of having developers offload processing to Amazon's cloud services. Which this was some. This was something that people that people have claimed is in is in the future of fu of full on cloud gaming. Instead instead of the half instead of the half seas model that we have with a lot of online games these days. Full on cloud gaming may happen one day, but it's not happening anytime soon. Full on cloud gaming would require that every person gaming, first of all, has a beefy setup. Mm -hmm. Because true cloud processing does not go through uh, any sort of central processor, it is using all the other all the processing of all the units within the within the cloud within the mesh network that you've created and and yes it is an ad hoc mesh network i am a network engineer i know what the fuck i'm talking about yeah um <laughs> it it uses the processing power of all of all connected objects to process what's going on and honestly, I don't think it'll ever get to that point. Um, having the central server that that directs that processing just makes things much, much easier. 
And so even if it does start to use the processing of everybody's machines, it'll still have a central unit somewhere. Because, well, just it's much like how you and I have se you and I have seen several startups come come up along the way where they um where they cl where they claim where they claim a collaborative type of leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, Future Club comes to mind with with the way they with the way they pitched how everybody has a say. And everybody has a say, but their says are not necessarily equal. Well, the the attitude that the attitude that I had is that they is that they want to do this whole as a group thing, but somebody has to be has to be the person who signs off on things at the end of the day. Yeah, there needs there needs to be at least one person who can break the tie if there is one. Mm -hmm. As as cute as it may seem to have have a to have a fully a a full a idea of a of a ultimate democracy of development it's not possible because you need some you need somebody to captain the ship mm -hmm. plus design by committee never ever 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 works but they but one of the in hindsight one of the warning signs and I I am going off a, a bit with the wiki just so I have some notes in front of me regarding this mm -hmm. is the claim that they wanted to make teams of five to thirty people who would work on games for between a year and eighteen months with a focus of creativity and craftsmanship. This is the first red flag because what it really shows is that the higher ups didn't have a full idea on how game development actually works. Yeah, they don't realize why good titles can take anywhere between three and seven years to make. Especially, especially if you've got a lot of moving parts involved. Yeah, and not to mention splitting up the teams that way. While you'd see this in larger corporations, I mean, the different business divisions of Square Enix come to mind, and there are some business divisions that are way better than others. Hi, Business Division 3, responsible for Nier and a few other things that everybody knows about. Um, you're the only people I actually trust in that fucking organization. Because the rest of them seem to keep thinking that pushing microtransactions is, is a good thing. Hi, Babylon's fall that is failing and it's not Platinum's fault and I'm going to fucking punch Square Enix in the face, I swear to God. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, what? What were we talking about again? Yep. But... When it comes... But... The the other thing is that whole teams of five to thirty people. Um, I I look at that as a very arbitrary number. Not only arbitrary, but for the types of games that I feel they were trying to go for, unrealistic. Now, a team of a team of five people can make an iOS game. Hell, oh, a one person team can make an iOS can make a decent iOS game or a decent indie game these days. Oh, one person can definitely make some really good indie games, but not in a year or 18 months unless they are driving themselves to the point of, of burnout. Mm -hmm. And we've we've talked about the issue. We talked about the whole crunch culture issue, which I'm not dedicating an episode of the podcast to discussing crunch culture because we've dipped into it in met in many forms in other episodes and there isn't really anything more that we'd have to add especially since the conversation has been brought up and a lot of it has been brought to light over the last few years there's really not much more we can contribute other than crunch culture bad don't do it here are some ways to prove it that would be basically ways other people have already discussed yeah and um we're not about we're not a bunch of bandwagoners here if we if yeah. we were if we were I'd probably be covering nothing but fifth edition. Uh. <laughs> 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 <sighs> 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 I didn't even. Uh. Uh, Monk, I think if you did nothing but cover fifth edition, and I mean like core fifth edition, you'd die in like a week. And up. Well, um, you'll notice that I didn't talk at all about about the Spelljammer announcement because I wasn't impressed. That wasn't an April Fool's joke. 
I don't know if it was or what. I don't know if it was or wasn't. I just kn I just know that it's not that. Um. Again, again, when Crown of the Oathbreaker exists, why do I need y why do I need Spelljammer, especially when fans have already filled that void multiple Indeed. times? But Rails. Indeed. Um, Apparently, the vice president of Am of Amazon Games had said that they wanted to make projects like Minecraft, The Walking Dead, and The Room. <laughs> what? There's a game series called The Room, which is an escape room set of games, I believe. Yeah, that yeah, that is that is the case. And when it comes to The Walking Dead, um, I think by tw I think by twenty by twenty fourteen. Oh, Telltale Games was starting to, was starting to have their own warning signs. Uh -huh. Um, I mean, between that and wanting to have a direct wanting to have an impact on the direction of hardware, you have a lot of people writing um checks with their mouth that they can't cash. Yep. And spoiler warning: a lot of times they didn't. Um, but apparently, a lot of the developers left after a year. Can't imagine why. Uh -huh. Then, let's flash forward to TwitchCon at in September of 2016, where they where they announced their first three proper PC games: Breakaway, Crucible, and New World. All three of these we will be getting to individually, but the fact that in Consider this: most of the time, when some when somebody is announcing a new studio, they usually only announce one game, not three. Yeah, that's a that's an ambitious, overly ambitious uh, statement. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the pitch for all three of these, which we'll get into, uh, we'll get into as we go through. Breakaway was a team-based brawler where you had teams of four um, fight, fighting to bring a ball to an opponent's goal. Basically, a, basically a mix between a fighting game and a sports game. Or, to put it another way, the kind of fantasy that Blood Bowl keeps promising me, and I want, and I'd want, and I want to see instead of adhering to the board game. Look, I love Blood Bowl as a board, as a board game, but I feel that if it wants to really reach its potential in video game form, it needs to take some more cues from, say, NFL Blitz. Uh -huh. or Or Mutant League Football. Or its more recent incarnation, Mutant Football League. Legally distinct. The second best type of, uh, of correctness. The first being technically correct. Mm -hmm. And... But for what, and they ha the thing is they um, they, it was also designed for Twitch integration, which a lot of games have been a lot of games have been doing, and I cer I certainly don't have anything against um Twitch integration. I don't use it personally, but th but um, it's a thing that people can take advantage of. I only really had a problem with it in the case of Borderlands Three, but that was because Randy had to be Randy. Hmm. I really didn't care for Borderlands even at around two, but you know that's just me. Well, there's there's multiple reasons on that on that front, but the thing, but the thing is, at in less than t the thing is, um, Breakaway was was get had gotten a had gotten a fair bit of positive reception in the er, in the early media scrums about the game and a lot, and the people who had played it had had said that while there's a few issues it looks very promising then in 2018 it got canceled which didn't make a lot of sense at the time yeah the now, it, now the game, the game itself was de was developed by Amazon Games' Orange County division, which um, had a lot had a lot of Double Helix people invo involved with it. In fact, it 
It was pre it was pretty much the reincarnation of Double Helix after Amazon acquired them in 2014. Um, and some of the inspirations that were noted f in the in the early releases were obviously League, Rocket League, and Power Stone. And they had an open alpha starting in December 2016. Mm -hmm. With with a scheduled release date for about three years later. Then in March of 2018, th the development was put on hiatus, and then later on it would be it would be canceled. Though, uh. though claiming that that it might be possible to dip back into it in the future if if the studio finds a thunderbolt of inspiration, quote unquote. Uh -huh. Oh. And what? And I remember. I remember. Look. I remember looking at. The, I remember looking at the game and and saying, I can certainly see some potential in this. And the idea of bra of brawling mixed with mixed with a sport is cert is. I think the the last time we saw that was was um Monday Night Combat or I think I think. And even then, that was just trying to be a class-based shooter with some sports humor. Basically trying to be Smash TV all over again, but with classes. Which... I love me some Smash TV, but I see... But, I, but, if some, but there's plenty of indie successors to Smash TV when it comes to twin-stick shooty. But... I remember when the announcement of it getting canceled ha had happened. I was confused, about as confused as the as that whole Phantom Dust game that Microsoft was teasing that never came to fruition. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Phantom Dust. Yeah, I've seen some people say that. Um. That breakaway was go was going to be was going to be dead in the water because of a comparison to Smite. I don't quite, and while there's while there's certainly no stranger of um, MOBA adjacent games, I don't think it was really applicable, especially since if you look at the game, if you look at just the gameplay of Breakaway, I would have yeah. a very hard time comparing it to a MOBA. Mm -hmm. And. Just for just for the just for the sake of it, in um in disputation of Geek Watch, I'm gonna put I'm going to share the a uh, ten minute demonstration that they had. Mm -hmm. Just look just look at a little bit of that and tell and tell me how is this gonna be? How would this end up being comparable to so, to some to um something like Smite? Or and or any other MOBA that you and I are familiar with. Um, it doesn't really. Um, while you do have the whole you know heroes thing, mm -hmm. because you want a unique team mechanic. Um, there's a lot more of a uh, focus on ball control. Mm -hmm. Additionally, um. Defenses are lesser, it looks like. A lot lesser. Yeah, it's the arenas like... are small are a lot smaller. But this is very much a sport game first before battle. The battle is just part of the sport. The sport is definitely zone control, ball control, etc. I'd say it I'd say when it comes to that ball control it has far more in common with say rugby. Yeah. Not just because of the level of violence. That's not even a factor here. The level of violence uh is irrelevant. It's more the the actual way ball control works. Yeah. I can't I I can't you I can't use um um soccer or, or football in in the comparison because well, those the um tur um turnovers in those kind of games are le are less frequent. Mm -hmm. Um, 
especially when it comes to American football. You usually usually have a very steady back and forth, and something like basketball would actually would actually be too fast comparatively. Mm-hmm. But the reason the reason why I th- the reason why of of the three of these break breakaways the one that stings the most is because I think they I think the developers had something. And I would have preferred it be allowed to fail on its own terms, if you follow me. Yeah, that if it were going to fail, it should be allowed to at least try itself out first. Yeah. But it didn't even get that. It didn't see the light of day. Mm-hmm. And uh, you look at the comments and, P- and it, that were made at the time with regarding the video I showed, and there was very much the attitude of of looking forward to seeing how this how this would play out. So exactly mm-hmm. why they decided to yank to yank the rug is something that baffles me to this day. Oh. But then we get to Crucible. Which was a weird case of they put the thing in early access, or rather closed beta, then launched then put it back in closed beta, and then canceled it. And the idea with Crucible was was meant... To, it was very much in the vein of a hero shooter, but it was a hero shooter that was, that was trying to be a mix of objectives and PvP. Almost sounds like they were trying to do something like Heroes of the Storm did for MOBAs. Both map objectives and the direct combat. Yeah. Um, trying to go trying even trying to go a bit asymmetric in their design. Mm-hmm. And once again, I'm once again I'm not saying that the ideas that they had were perfect, but I'd rather but Rather that somebody that somebody had got a little bit trigger happy when it came to pulling the plug, and Nerd Slayer has done a video about uh, about um, about Crucible in his Death of a Game series, mm-hmm. which he makes he made some good points. I do think I do think that um, trying to go with that degree of ace of asynchronousness. I think it could. I think it could be done. the pro- The problem that often happens when people try and mix shooter with with um, asynchronous mobile moba elements is trying is trying to find a balance between the two of them because you either you either end up leaning too far into the into a certain type of shooter angle, a la um, Valorant. Mm-hmm. Or you end, or you end up leaning more to more in the hero angle, a la um. Well, I would I would bring up Overwatch, but that has its own issues that are unique to Overwatch. Um, mm-hmm. I'll bring up Battleborn instead, largely because it tried to throw in a hodgepodge of a of like eight different genres all at once. What about um pulling up Paladins? Paladins did a lot of third person shootiness and it was a it was a MOBA. I'd actually say Paladins is a be, is a far better balance. On, pa- on didn't have any map di- yeah, didn't have any map objectives though really. No, but what it did ha- what it did have is a degree of personalization as you develop, which is something mm-hmm. that is a hallmark within MOBAs. Mm-hmm. You know, ca- you know, pick ban phase, cash shop, that kind of thing. Mhm. Obviously, it's not as in depth as the as the gargantuan cash shop you see in League, but there is but there is something where you can feel like you're developing. I think the uh, not having a cash shop as big as League was actually to its advantage because then not everything you know most things are viable and nothing almost nothing's a trap. It was built around three subtypes, so you have mm-hmm. so you have so you don't have the swim damn it problem that I've been very critical of. Over the years, and I do, pl- I do plan on dedicating an episode of the podcast just to, he- just to hero-based games, 
Mm. But the the vibe that I always saw with Crucible was was trying was trying to put in it trying to put in an extra bit of viability element to the jungling part of it. Yeah. Instead instead of it being an arena where everybody or everybody's just throwing themselves into te into team fights, you're tr you're trying to go from place to place to to take advantage of objectives. Yeah. Um. Now as far now as far as far as the whole putting it in early access and then releasing it and then unreleasing it, um, I will admit some of it wasn't their fault because this development time this development cycle happened right around the time that the Koof was in full swing, which mm -hmm. there's a fair few games that really got really got um their de their development hamstrung by the Koof. I know a lot of people think, well, can, couldn't they just work? Couldn't they just work remote? Um, there are th there, not having it, not having direct access to their to these servers that they were using to develop, is what really hamstrung a lot of studios. Yeah, even with remote work, and VPNing into or using terminals into virtual machines, it's really hard to keep the same. A fidelity on your project. Yeah. Now, granted, um, some of the some of the options weren't exactly were ex didn't there weren't weren't exactly the biggest amount of variety, especially with certain characters. But that's something that could have been refined with with testing and development. Mm. I don't see that as reason enough to shit can something. Mm -hmm. Um. I think it was. I think, I think the. I think it was the fact that they weren't that they weren't getting Overwatch level numbers right out of the gate, and the higher ups got cold feet. Cause one, Which is stupid. because oh, one thing that we, one thing that we've definitely one pattern that we definitely saw throughout this whole affair, is. Them jumping in, thinking that thinking that they would that they would be able to compete on the level with the big boys in the room, um, which if when they're the unproven, case, yeah, when you're un when you're unproven and you're expecting people to have to put in a inv a investment of any amount of money into into the into the project, you've got you've got to go that extra mile to, to prove it. Either either through either through community outreach or or something else, mm -hmm. or just or just by doing something just by doing something unique like Lennis Gate, which has a interesting take on time on um time travel. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's obvious obviously the fact that trying to trying to do a what. What might even be considered a slightly better version of something like Overwatch, um, you're still going to get the comparison, and that's still going to hamstring you. But they thought they thought that they would be able to get those that the same numbers that the proven commodities have right out of the gate. Yep, they didn't give themselves time to try and even prove it and build a fan base. I do, I do, I do know that's. I do know that it had that it had gotten mixed. It had gotten um mixed reviews, but once again, once again, this is one of those things where. Some where I think somebody was short sighted on the matter. Yeah, and of course the the people involved with the development, Relentless Studios. Would be utilized as a helper studio for the third project, and the the one that actually got released, even though there were delays upon delays upon delays with the damn thing. 
And Yo, I we should... heard we heard you liked Shigeru Miyamoto, so we delayed your game while delaying your game, so you could have a good game when you got a game. And there are a couple there are a couple minor ones I want I want to bring up before I get before I get to that point. Um, there were two other games, one called Nova and one called Intensity, that never even saw the light of day, and nobody even heard of until the Bloomberg article talking about Amazon Game Studios' problems behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So you can so you can add that you can add those to the list. Um, there was there was a video game adaptation of Grand Tour, the spiritual successor to Top Gear, that wasn't quite as good. And the Grand Tour game, well, it's a well, it's a licensed game. You know how these go. Yep. Um, apparently, there was a twi- Twitch extension inspired by Dragon's Lair, which I have no interest in. I'd rather just play Dragon's Lair. Exactly. But apparently, Nova was supposed to was supposed to be a project that was going to be a MOBA. Um, which I know some some people might say it would have just been a poor man's league. There was also an attempt to do a BR inspired project called Intensity. Neither of these saw the light of day. And I think with that, we can actually establish the uh, pattern we've been alluding to. Um, Anytime Amazon Game Studios tried to make a thing for itself, except for one time, uh, the games either came out very briefly in a very rushed state and were immediately shit-canned afterwards, or never, ever got out at all. Which is a damn shame, to be honest. And once again, once again, there there um there seemed to be a ro- they seem to be a build Rome in a day kind of thing, and this is something that I think I think is a prop I think is a problem with with um the way Amazon was running things as a whole because in their um. In their te- in their te- in their tele in their television quote unquote end of things, Bezos has made it no bones that he wants he wants his own version of Game of Thrones, which is. I'm I'm sure he has the best of intentions. Yeah, except except by by saying you by saying you want your version of Game of Thrones, you're never going to get that because no because one after what happened with Dan and Dave, nobody nobody wants to touch Game of Thrones. And two, don't grab properties that are that aren't gonna, that aren't going to feel anything like Game of Thrones. High Wheel of Time and the high, and High Rings of Power. Wheel of Time was shit and ring. Wheel of Time, the TV series was shit, and Rings of Power is going to be drizzling shit, bowling shoe ugly, as Jr. would say. <laughs> and um, as far as Wheel of Time, oh, I'll get to you later this month. Oh, fuck! We're doing that this month. Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck. At the ver- at the very least, at the very least, we'll um we'll be in the same boat as Sanderson. <laughs> Side note: Did you see how many people were fucking freaking out that um from Soft uh, was saying, "Hey, we want you to write a game with us too." Oh yeah, I saw. Oh yeah, I saw that. And um, given the given the amount of detail that Sanderson puts puts in his own fight scenes, I am fucking here for that. I'm here for it too, but that I just wanted to bring that up briefly. That's a bit rails. I think I think there, but I think it's a lot of people who are still butthurt about the fact that he was able to make more money than any of them with with a with a Kickstarter that didn't even say what the book was gonna be. Books multiple. Mm-hmm. Multiple because he can't fucking help himself. He has a crippling addiction to writing. Mm-hmm. 
You were supposed to be on vacation, damn it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, Wheel of Time and and uh, and not Lord of the Rings because it's not um, are not anything that are going to feel like Game of Thrones. So yeah. But with it, but when it came to New World, um, I will I will give the devil its due on one thing. The aesthetic that New that New World was trying to go for is some is something that I enjoy. Um, it's a good aesthetic. You know, go, going in, going for fantasy, but going more f but going more for I guess a lot of MMOs. Now, there is still that theme park element, but I'd say I'd say the kind I'd say the kind of freedom that it was trying to aim for is more akin to something like Eve. Mm -hmm. Or if we're going to shout out some other people, Ember, mm -hmm. spelled E M eight E R, um, made by the uh, magnificent Mark Kern and his team. It's not out yet, but uh, they're doing lots of good stuff. Um, yes, I'm shilling for him, and I feel no shame. You cannot shame that which is shameless. We've already shilled for him in this in this temple twice. Yep, but uh, Ember has the same idea of freedom that New World was going for. Yeah, um, one of the things that they tr that they tried to boast about as as a big deal is going full on action targeting, no no auto locking, no ta no tab targeting. Um, which I know some people is one of those things where, as cute as as cute as as um as as MMOs that do that, I do think that that full on action targeting has its de has its disadvantages, especially if you're in a place that doesn't have a reliable server. Like I know Ankalon prefers tab targeting because of the input lag he has to deal with since he's in. Africa and connecting to European servers. I would like to point out that not even a single player game like Devil May Cry 5, a game with huge amounts of action, gives up a target, like a target lock. Mm -hmm. Full on action targeting, while it sounds nice, um, is not going to be good for a game meant to be played at a wide scale. Maybe at a land party, sure. Well, that's the reason why why um a lot of arena shooters could get away with 
the with the very precise a aiming setup with not a whole lot of bullet magnetism. Mm hmm Because you're not going to have as many moving parts. But obviously with a MMO, especially one that is expected to do at that level, you can't really you can't really get away with demanding that level of precision especially when for for the most part you're going to be using melee weapons mm -hmm. oh and while i do while i do appreciate the idea of going with skill based advancement instead of classes and levels um a big disad i'd say a big reason why a lot of mmos don't go classless is because is because going with a class system makes all, makes all the actions and the like easier to balance. Mm. Like consider consider the consider how I would hesitate to say that the PVP in any Souls like game is balanced. <laughs> ha! Balance. In a souls like? Yes, there's a balance, monk. It's the same balance as Brawl Minus. <laughs> wow, we are really scraping the bottom of the barrel. That's not bottom of the barrel. Brawl Minus is the epitome of probably the funnest uh, Super Smash Brothers I've ever fucking played. Oh, okay. Better word. Deep cutting. Yes, we are we are invoking the old magics. Mm -hmm. Because we were there when it was written. Uh huh. But the thing, but the thing of it is, with the, with those particular games, that per, that kind of PV, that kind of broken ass PVP is a consequence of the freeform nat is on some levels a consequence of the freeform nature. Of a souls like, mm -hmm. because of the fact that while some may, while some may protest me saying this, there is no such thing as a souls like with a class system. It just can't work. I can hear them screaming now, monk. But you you choose a class at the beginning of the game. That is yeah. a starting yeah. That's a starting package. That's not a class. You're, cho you're choosing a kit. Because I can guarantee you, from there, you can grow in any goddamn direction you want. Yes, some kits are more suited to growing in one direction than another. But, grind enough, any kit becomes whatever it wants to be. Mm -hmm. it's, like say, it's like saying that the... It's like, it's like saying that you pick a class in Anima. Oh, <laughs> 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 And the uh, the uh, now granted, what I do find kind of amusing is th when it comes to this sort of community freeform style. There was one game that was make. There were a couple of games that were making quite the rounds for for ha for having that freeformness, but didn't have as many moving parts and technically weren't MMOs, but were still comparative to. To um, New World in some regards, mm -hmm. that those being Outward and Valheim. Outward had the problem of guide, damn it! Though a lot of that game is guide, damn it. Oh yeah, I'm not denying that for one for one moment. The pain is at least a little bit lessened because of how it did co-op in in the sense of hey, both of you can suffer together with the guide, damn it. And. Mm -hmm. The and I will I will ad I will admit that a lot that New World attempting t attempting two things, um, PVP and and, a and an emphasis on the on its own in-game economy are novel things, but they're things that you ha they're things that you cannot fuck around with, and you can't do half-assed. Mm-hmm. But then the then the problems started to, started to occur. Um, chief among them is the is the fact that 
it was ve it was very easy to adv it was very easy to advance and and do and do well with the mechanics early game, and mi but mid game trying to do well with the with the economy started to create problems. Uh -huh. Oh. The uh, then of then of course we had some of the bigger problems, namely the economy going into freefall mode, the whole thing uh, the whole thing of trying to inject gold to fix the problem. Um, also the bugs. So so many bugs. <laughs> Which as some so many bugs many, you might think this is Starship Troopers. Yeah, as. There was a, oh yeah, and how could we not forget the um, bricking problem? Especially with it, especially with certain people who had RTX 3090 cards. More specifically, the ones that were made by EVGA. Oh, and the theory for that was that there was the lack of a FPS limit was causing some GPUs to render way too many frames per second at full load. Way too many fucking frames per second at full load. Mm -hmm. Although to EVGA's credit, they had they had put out a statement saying that they would re that they would replace any GPUs bricked by the game at no cost. It got EVGA. I mean, it still it still sucks that that they had to go through the whole thing. But at the very at the very least, um, you had you had one company being smart about the about this because it wasn't their fault. Well, and what's really funny is uh, like you just said, it it wasn't their fault. This isn't anything that these companies could have foreseen. Mm-hmm. Uh. The other, I think the other case of some of someone not planning things through was the, was um the huge amount of queue times that were ha that ended up happening. Uh, mm -hmm. because because some because some of the servers ended up hit ended up hitting their limits, and each server only allowed two thousand players to be connected simultaneously. Reminds me of the problem uh, Final Fantasy XIV had with uh, Endwalker's release. Although to be fair, with to be to be fair to be fair, with <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV, it was it was more I'd say that was something that nobody could have seen coming. They didn't ex they didn't expect that a whole bunch of people would jump from World of Warcraft after the, after all the lawsuits happened into F into FF14. And I don't mm -hmm. think that they had accounted for that huge of a transfer, because they weren't. Because I think up, I think f for, throughout most of a realm reborn, they weren't trying to directly compete with WoW. Mm -hmm. Because and I, I could easily see the mindset of of the kind of game that we're trying to do and the kind of game that they're trying to do. It doesn't have that much crossover, so so it is it is what it is. Of course, think that's not how things ended up going down, and <laughs> there and there was that whole thing of them getting so overwhelmed that they had to take the game off of digital stores just so that they could try and address the problem. They only took um, they only took off the ability to purchase new keys, yeah, mm -hmm. and it was to limit. Um, the amount of new incoming customers because they wanted to make sure that everybody who had already purchased the game got the chance to play the game. Mm -hmm. But New World did not have that problem. New no. World had a different problem with servers too small. Yeah, server, servers too small. It's bit, um, I'd, say, I'd say that New World is another classic case on why I do not miss the le the um the concept of open world PVP. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, I'm, I'm very much glad for the fact that in the last few MMOs that I have dipped into, PvP was something that was localized to certain arenas. Or to dual requests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's some it's something that you opt into instead of and and um it's a lot harder to have griefs. Yep. Even um even with the way Elden Ring is is with its multiplayer, um you still have to opt in by going into co op. Mm hmm. Um if you want to see another example on how you on how this can go bad, consider the tagging consider the yellow tagging problem that happened with the old republic mm -hmm. where somebody would sit uh, somebody would sit on a target that was important to a quest in order to goad someone into um tech into flagging themselves for pvp yeah and whenever this would be brought up the adherents would say oh you just need to pay attention yeah because it's somehow my fault that somebody baited me This is why I like the fact that uh, certain games, Final Fantasy XIV, have tab targeting. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, so, I know, some people say that action targeting is more immersive. I don't completely agree. I mean, action targeting might make it, it might make it more entertaining to watch, but that's damning with faint praise but we've already gone over that um let's not for, let's not forget that there was there was there was the infamous issue of someone de someone decided to use the worst possible choice regarding the text chat um you're gonna have to fill me in on that one um <laughs> You could put in HTML code into the text chat. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and there were some things that were... And sometimes this would make text chat ridiculously um, in the way. Other, t other, times it, other times it would be a good... It, it would be a surefire way to get somebody kicked. Oh. Um, there was also that invincibility glitch that you could exploit by moving the window around. But mm. a lot of these are things that should have been patched. And still haven't been. No. Because I... When it came to... When it came to the when it came to the when it came to the orange when it came to the orange county division um i do get i do get the feeling that they had a bunch that this particular style of mmo was something that a lot of the people involved weren't weren't as weren't as adept with this sort mm. of, this sort of free form especially since I'd say a lot of people who are involved in MMO development these days are more in, in the theme park development because um, CCP Games has kind of uh, kind of has a stranglehold on the um, sandbox style MMO these days, although their grasp on that is tenuous at best. Uh, it's kind of funny looking back at old logs and see, and seeing that some people were were trying to hype up Star Citizen as something that was going to blow Eve out of the water. In 2016. You mean the game that still hasn't technically released its first 1.0 version? Mm hmm. <sighs> and I'm pretty sure it will be past retirement age by the time it does. Or Chris if, Roberts will be dead. If, Monk, not when. <laughs> I'm still not convinced that this is that it's anything more than a fucking scam. I li I liken it to um the film Heaven's Gate <laughs> or the development of the film Heaven's Gate I should say I knew what you meant <laughs> Although Heaven's
Heaven's Gate actually came out, and the the non-MGM version is okay if a little over-ambitious, i.e. the Criterion version, but then again, it's Criterion. Mm -hmm. But... And the, the reason... The thing, the thing is, and why I, why I brought up something like Valheim, Valheim certainly has a degree, a degree of open world with a, with a whole lot of people together. Um, you could also use something like Ark, although I'm not the biggest fan of Ark. I know Kason's a big fan of Ark, but um, I'm not saying, but nobody bats a thousand. <laughs> but even with those. You don't have you don't have you don't have hundreds of people in one instance. At the most you, have you like might have eight. a dozen. Mm hmm And even and even that's pushing it. Mm hmm And because because of, because of that, you don't have you don't have to deal with a whole lot of strain. But MMOs are pro MMOs are probably the I would actually say they're the hardest kind of game to develop for both in short and in long term. Well, you have to develop a game that's going to be exciting for multiple people and you're going to have to develop a game that allows multiple people to exist at the same time in the game world. And to make it all the worse, you have to develop multiple game multiple um gameplay mechanics to accommodate multiple gameplay styles. Yeah, there's a, a million different moving parts to a, to a, um, an MMO that's done well. And even if you get all those right at the start, you've got to keep maintaining that with with content. Mm-hmm. If you fall off, they fall off, and that's never good for yeah. you. And when it came to the when it came when it came to the economy, as I mentioned, they um they tried to fix the problem by giving everybody a bunch of gold. Why does that that sounds familiar? Why does it why does it sound like something real world countries have done and also failed at? Oh, because it has. That's artificial inflation, motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. and, Remember uh, the Reichsmark? Remember the Reichsmark after World War One? That's yep. that, that that's what you're doing. And. Then they tr then the claim was that they that it was then after everybody used it they're like no 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 we over we overdid it we need you to give that gold back <laughs> which too maybe, late yeah way too fucking late money was spent motherfuckers the day you gave it out and there's already plenty of people who have done extensive timelines on everything that happened and because there's a lot of stuff I'm skipping um. I do remember at least one person had implied that at one point early on, um, New World was going was going to be more of a BR kind of game, which maybe it never happened. Um, I don't know if that I don't know if that happened or not, but if it did, it might explain a few things. Like if it if it actually ended up going through genre shifts in its early development, that would explain quite a bit. <laughs> but the whole but the whole thing is after after everything went after everything went down the way it did this is where you start to get people fed up who aren't who aren't willing to come back and they didn't and the the um, play count numbers sank like a stone, to the point where New World is basically a ghost town these days, compared to where it was. It's not dead, but it's nowhere. But and there's st there's still a f I say a ghost town, but there's still a decent amount of people playing. But it's a decent amount in in regard in that's in regard to say, um, mid -le mid level tier MMOs, not the not the huge beasts that it that it wanted to be, uh -huh. and I'd say I'd say that I'd say when it comes to the things that created this mirage that is Amazon Game Studios, 
the big one of them was the fact that th was the fact that they had eyes bigger than their stomach. And the only thing that really allowed them to prop themselves up as a game studio for so long was how many things they published that weren't created in house. There was also the whole thing of just trying to throw money at the problem, mm -hmm. which, as we've made clear in the past, doesn't work ever. Throwing money at problems can work for very few things in life. Mm -hmm. But game to when I saw that, I remember when that Bloomberg article came out. There was definitely a vibe that. The people higher up had no idea how game development actually worked, yeah. And thought and and worse, thought that they knew they knew better than people who were already veterans. I think that's the reason why so many people jumped ship after the first year. Would not surprise me. Oh, and I, I know that I know that there was also that Lord of the Rings MMO that was announced and that and then was canceled. The reason I didn't bring that up is because there is because it's a bit more complicated. Um what had happened was Tencent had purchased the people developing it and there were some contractual conflicts. Yeah. So that particular thing was a special case and truth be told I don't I didn't exactly have high hopes for mm -hmm. it. I mean, I've I was always iffy about the idea of a Lord of the Rings MMO, even when Turbine did it. I don't I don't exactly know why I was so trepidatious about it. I think it I think it was more of what can you actually do, especially especially given um, what ha what happened what happened with certain developers I know about what they about what they could draw from. And what they couldn't draw from in all the books. Uh -huh. It's like you can you can use you can you can use anything from anything from the trilogy from the original trilogy of books, except for the appendix in Return of the King for some reason. Because that happened. Yep, that happened and doesn't always make sense. No. And. When it came to the other thing, when it, the other thing is want is um looking looking wait looking too envious at one's competitors instead of trying to build your own audience, which something that, something that is advi that is advised when it comes to content creators is not to look at the big names and just do your do your thing and build an audience organically than trying to jump on trends. Mm -hmm. And that's very much the case of what they were doing, because consider some, consider some of the projects that were made and some of the ones that were cancelled. Um, you have Breakaway, which obviously was, which um, just with, just with that presentation video I showed you, it's very clear that they wanted to go full eSport with that right out of the gate. Which mm -hmm. is, which um, pro tip for any game development studio, don't try and shoot for esports immediately. Wait until you actually have a community and then try and make an esport. The other th the other thing is they ha is them doing their own version of say League or for or Fortnite. Games that games that had a well had a well established entrenched fan base. Yeah. Which because of the fact that they, when you have that, it's it they're not going to be all that willing to jump on to jump onto something else. There are certain there are certain types of games where. If you have a fan base for that, you can you can kind of get them to try other games that are similar, like with say mm. people who play a lot of fighting games. Because we're I think we're past the point where where um 
that where the kind of person who just plays Street Fighter and nothing else isn't really a thing anymore. But it's a little harder to do that when it comes to a when it comes to games that are as su such time investment as MOBAs or um, BRs. Yeah. And most of the people who are playing, say, COD Warzone, aren't jumping onto other BRs, even even though they even though they might they might exist. They're picking that one and they're sticking to it and nothing else. Mm hmm. I just wonder if that's why there was that push to try and have a BR with BR mode with Halo Infinite, even though that was a, even though Doctor Disrespect was a complete fucking idiot when he thought that when he thought about pitching that. But try, but try, in, but it's kind of funny that they talked about a focus of creativity and craftsmanship when there was that Trent when there was that. Um, trend chasing. Mm -hmm. And obviously, obviously, there's always going to be a bit of tr a bit of trend chasing to try and get some attention. But you don't have to make it so obvious. Is the way I see it. There's one one could, well. Some of my colleagues have been playing um, Master Duel, which you look at it and it ver and it very much has a vibe of this is trying to be Hearthstone but with Yu-Gi-Oh, which is cer is certainly accurate. But I'd ha but it but at the same time it's it's not trying to be so it's not trying to be so obviously jumping on the Hearthstone bandwagon that it distracts from the point. Like say artifact did. Yeah. Now, granted, one hasn't, and I can't. I can't even use the argument of established IP because artifact was building on the Dota IP. Granted, it was an inability to read the room, but we've been over this. Nobody wanted a card game. No. Whereas, the idea of a let of a less shitty version, less shitty version of Dual Links. Well, people definitely wanted that. Yep. I mean, I say fuck Konami every, all day, all day, every day, but at the at the same time, there is still an audience for that particular brand of things. Um, even and it, remember, go ahead. I'm the guy who doesn't play any Yu-Gi-Oh, has never played any Yu-Gi-Oh, has not collected Yu-Gi-Oh, and has only ever been gifted cards that he will likely sell in bulk um <clears throat> and i've still managed to uh, through via osmosis and proximity absorb Yu-Gi-Oh rules and understand how Yu-Gi-Oh works to a certain degree <laughs> so it while we can say fuck konami all we want uh, not only is there still an audience um it, it's actually rather large mm-hmm But I think I think the I think um the fact that Amazon Game Studios just rebrand had rebranded itself to Amazon Games in at the at the end of twenty twenty shows that they had kind of conceded that they had bitten off more than they could chew. Yeah. And I'd say I'd say um I'd say handling the we, handling the Western release of Lost Ark is a is a is an admission that their approach was not the was not the best one to have. Because yeah, I know some people want to would want to bring up um, Lost Ark when it comes to when it comes to the discussion of Amazon dipping into game design, but they didn't develop lost ark they only pu they only public they only published and localized it um lost ark had already been a thing for a few years through smilegate yep it's been around for a while um the western release is something like 3 or 4 years behind the korean original and with and 
in the last in the last six years, um, the ARPG genre, both online and offline, has become very competitive. Yep. Not in not in the terms of everybody trying to rip something off because, yes, technically a lot of them could be are, could be considered Diablo clones, but they are but. You look at this, you look at Path of Exile, you look you look at Warhammer Chaos Bane, you look at Tit you look at Titan Quest. These are all high quality ARPGs. Mm -hmm. And having that having that variety of high quality entries is is something is something that's going to help longevity. Especially since other people are going to inevitably enter the fray. But I think I think if there's any real lesson to be taken from this idea of of Amazon's attempt at at game development, it is you need to develop an organic audience instead of tr instead of trying to jump in right into the deep end thinking that you can thinking that you can swim it's <clears throat> it's also more an idea of um knowing the proper management culture because again one of the earlier red flags you you pointed out the whole teams of 5 to 30 people to develop games in a year to 18 months it's that's untenable and unachievable. You'd be pushing every one of those teams to burnout. Mm -hmm. You could. Are there certain game? Are there a lot of the game? Also, it'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't point out all of the games that they were de all the games that they were developing as their big entries were all online multiplayer focused games. At a point in time where the idea of tr of trying to jump or of trying to jump onto, um, onto online multiplayer as your as your big selling point, isn't as strong of a selling point as it was a decade ago. Mm hmm Especially with especially with certain companies, um, deciding to really double down on single player experiences. Well. I mean, that extends all the way back to nobody wants to play single-player games. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a classic case of tempting the gods of irony. Not 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 the uh, first time people have made wrong wrong uh, wrong predictions and shot themselves in the foot because of it. Yes. We usually call these people Nostradamus. I think even Nostradamus had more self-respect. <laughs> Should I call them Rasputins instead? Yes. Fair point then. Now, with that in with that in mind, I'd I will ad, I will admit that a, with a, with um the of the th of the three of them of the three um of the three ones that that came out and and had problems if you were to, if you were to if you were to be in the if you were to be in the shoe, the executive shoes and and one of them had to get the focus which one of those three sh do you think it should have been when they when they came out swinging at TwitchCon that year? Um, in 2016, mm -hmm. um, the focus should have always been New World. They were already looking at being innovative and trying to do something new with a very large crowd. Uh, all of the focus should have gone in on New World. Um, not only so they could have you know better server space and not come up against that issue so much, overcome all the bugs and all the exploits but also so they could have the time to listen to and develop content from their 
from their user base. And it would have also been at a time where, um, while it isn't the the beginning of the exodus, there were still disgruntled people slowly sheafing away from WoW, even back then. Because um, Shadowlands had happened. Mm -hmm. And there were still people who weren't fully on board with Final Fantasy XIV, um, because that was the end of Heaven's Word into Stormblood, and Stormblood was looking a little more uh, subdued as a story and as a as a as a game compared to Heaven's Word. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so you would have had a chance to pull in an audience of your own there. And if we're going to focus on one thing, the only one that actually has a proven track record at this point is New World, even if that track record is terribly tainted. The other two, they came out so briefly and left that you can't really say what the trends could have been if they'd stayed around longer. Here we know that there that there are blueprints for success, and they just needed to focus on them. Mm -hmm. So, so in my opinion, it definitely should have been New World. They should have uh, they should have consolidated everything and gone after the after that as their first project. And yeah, that's still very ambitious. But at that point, the ambition would not have been. Uh, unwarranted it's like this is the first thing we've seen what other studios do with different things we think we can do really well like this we have a very strong infrastructure because even back then aws was nearly ubiquitous mm -hmm. um so working in their own amazon web services infrastructure means that they have a strong structure in place uh, one of the few things that they would have had over their competition uh or, or any other startups around the time would be, yeah, we have an infrastructure that so long as the actual internet in our area does not go down, you're going to be up. That's a good selling point. It also makes for better transmission and everything else. Um, if I'm being honest, one thing one thing that I would that I would have been against is utilizing utilizing their lumber yard for this because. Lumberyard is not you is um not used very much by a lot by a lot of people, and you know what you know what it's loosely based off of. Uh, I did at one point, but I haven't kept up with Amazon it so much. CryEngine. Yeah, but CryEngine was great for physics. Yeah, but Cry but CryEngine was ne was never designed for. For the for the level of streaming that you'd need to do with a um with a with a um MMO, I know monk. I was mm -hmm. it, it was sarcasm. Point. I'm point implying that crisis is just in physics engine. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that and a meme, and I only know this because of that because of the lawsuit that Crytek tried to pull against. Tried to pull against R against um RSI because they because they had gotten sour grapes about being dumped. Mm hmm. But, but I I honestly think that th that instead of trying to go with go with their propri go with a proprietary engine, they should have used an engine that you could bring people in and and have them be familiar with right out of the gate, like say. Um, Unreal. Yeah, but Amazon didn't want to pay licensing fees. That's the issue. Well, well, um, I think I th I think paying I think given the amount of money and, they were throwing around, I think paying licensing fees would have been paltry. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it was more that they had a little brother complex. That too. Wanting to say, hey, we, hey, we can, we can play with the big boys. Just we can play with the big boys just as well with our own games and are made on our own, made on our own tech. Is mm. who was the last person to say that? Was that Square Enix with 1.0? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, Crystal Tools was a mess, according to what I heard early yep. on. Yep, and and then they learned from that and made Luminous. 
but I but um I haven't I haven't heard any grand resets of 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 graphical engines, and now that they've essentially re essentially regressed to becoming a becoming a publisher, i.e. pulling what pulling what Sega did in the mid two thousands. The There's the, there's the question of what are they going to do with that lumberyard tech? License it out? Probably, but it's but with how specialized with how specialized it was, who's going to take who's going to take it? I mean, if I was if I was developing a game, the it's the question of do I use an engine that pe that plenty of people have used and it's going to be easy to it's going to be easier to hire people who have experience with it. Or do I use this brand new engine that people, that the less people are going to be familiar with and would have to be trained in advance, which is going to cost extra? That's why. That's why I say that they should have taken the L in the short term and ju and just been willing to pay licensing fees to, um, e to Epic. Mm. <clears throat> well, I do have to point out, firstly. Lumberyard has been superseded, Monk. July last year, after a partnership with the Linux Foundation, uh, Lumberyard is is going to be kaput, and with the Open 3D Foundation, uh, it's going to be called the Open 3D Engine. Which is which is nice and all, but a lot of the a lot of the things I st I stated still apply. Is it? Is it just me, or is almost everything using Lumberyard never came out? Either never... The only thing that... Well, let's see. We've already talked about the whole stuff with Amazon. Um, mm -hmm. Star Citizen is still in, it, in, perpe in a perpetual state of development. In a perpetual state of life and death. And... I can't think. I can't think of anything else that was that utilized um, lumberyard. Dead House Sonata, which is st which that is also still in a still in a extensive development and and being and being um headed up by a person with his own issues. We haven't. Didn't we already talk about Dayak? <sighs> Not in detail. I don't have any beef with Dayak personally, but some of his output over the years has not done him any favors, and he definitely didn't—he definitely didn't look the best when he tried to pick a fight with Epic. <laughs> no, the only—the only games that I can see that were fully released are uh, Coffins, uh, Grand Tour, and New World. The first of those I've never even heard of. It's a fighting game by a developer I've never heard of. Sweet Bandits Studio. Who? 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 Let me let me let me see if there's anything else why from them. The I, this, why do I get the feeling this is their only game? It's their first game. Did they do anything after that? Deceive Incorporated coming soon. Damning with faint praise. I don't think it's getting completed anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I just went to their uh, their website, which is guys, guys. This is supposed to be a website, not just an extension of social media, uh, with just a few blurbs, and that's that. Um. But it has wanted ads for a back-end programmer and a technical animator. A back-end programmer? Are you fucking insane? You might want to explain why you're why you're having that kind of reaction over that over that um listing. So uh... Depending on how what they mean by backend programmer, this could change. But as someone who works in a very technical position, a backend programmer is someone who 
helps to program the spine and undercarriage of your infrastructure. If you have an online digital service, something that has to be online to work, such as the thing I am a, a, a network engineer for at the head of my team, video conferencing. That That's an online component, a service that must be online to work. Your backend programmers are the people building the platform that all goes over, all the data. This guy is going to be heavily integral to anything they have that is an online service. Oh my god, what? Work experience, development, and deployment with Inter infrastructure as cloud technologies to deploy services to web providers such as Amazon. They want him to be able to program in the cloud initially. Are you... I just... That seems a bit much. What are you making? Like, I understand, yeah... This, this is just a work listing, so maybe... Let me look at the tasks. New server features and maintain existing code. Okay, you need a team for that. Diagnose and resolve issues to improve code robustness. I hope you have a team for that. Collaborate closely with other programmers to ensure the quality of game services. Okay, you do have a team for that. Develop and perform functional and load tests. Along with the team you just mentioned, right? Please, please, among with the, the uh, proposed solutions that scale horizontally to ensure high availability of web services. Okay, okay. And collaborator in maintaining and improving our build system. Okay, it looks like they're going to work with the team, and they're not the only backend programmer. They just need another one. Fine, I will. I will reserve judgment. Except for the fact that they want both of these positions to relocate to Quebec or Ontario. Nope. Because they're based in Quebec. I will pass. <laughs> also, they have literally no information about coffins on their website at all. We live by a simple code. Love what we do. Give our best every day and respect one another. Sweet Bandit Studios is a small but mighty studio based in Quebec City, Canada. We pride ourselves on our openness and involvement of all team members into studio-wide decision-making. Oh, God. I take everything I just said back. It's, it's designed by Committee Monk. Yeah, that's a case of into the trash it goes. Okay, so... It, that's three for three. That terrible bullshit. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this game looks terrible. But it's got positive ratings on Steam. Out of 11 ratings. You don't oh exactly my... sound confident. I don't sound confident because I'm actually watching this game, Monk. It's a party fighter between coffee baristas. If that was done by a small, in if that was if that was done by a small indie team, they are sweet, sweet. Sweet Bandit Studios is an indie team. This is a small studio for sure. I guess what I guess what I'm saying is that if if it was done as as a a sprite gag, um, it might have it might have had better luck. Offense is a fast paced blend of fighting games and twin stick shooters. With the what? Coffee is literally your health bar, and every hit ejects the precious liquid up in the air for anyone else to take. Experience dramatic reversals and tense standoffs as you fight to the last drop with up to four players. This sounds like a poor man's version of Duck Game. Experience a new way to play. Twin Stick Fighting. 
Aim your strikes with unparalleled precision with the right joystick. Those two things don't go together. So looking at a uh, looking at the looking at these reviews, there's nine there's nine uh, positive reviews and two negative. And apparently the online support is broken. No wonder they need a back-end developer! Your infra is broken! No shit. So there you go! So the people using you... Lumberyard all make shitty games! <laughs> like I said, maybe they'd be, be maybe Amazon would have been better served taking the L paying up paying up a licensing fee and using unreal for fuck's sake they'd be better off using unity mhm mm we've seen good games come out of unity mhm mm but i think th i think the fact that they that they want that they wanted to be. They wanted to come off like they like they could, like they like they could trade blows with Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, as well as possibly trade blows with Steam, is the kind of thing that's d that's done them in. And I know I know Epic has been trying has been trying to trade blows with Steam, but um, the Epic Game Store has not been profitable. Well, that's because the Epic Game Store and the Epic Launcher are fucking scamming botnet. But I, uh, I digress. Mm -hmm. well, I already dig digressed once enough on Sweet Bandits, so. <laughs> yeah. But overall, but overall, I do think that, and that any future that Amazon Games has is going to be in the form of. Um, letting other people handle the game development work. Yep, they are better at just spending money to get other games out in the West. It will make them more money in the long run than them trying to develop their games. Mm -hmm. uh, even though there was high hopes for New World, as we've extensively gone over here, New World itself is floundering and about to go down. I think... I think... Um... I remember Josh Strife Hayes saying that New World is the opposite of of most MMOs, where most MMOs get better with a lengthy amount of time. New World gets worse. I think it might have been Josh Strife Hayes. I'd have to rewatch his video. Um, but the um, I think my biggest point is that they just they didn't do enough to engage their audience. They, they should have gotten more and more user input so that they could, in, you know, see what user trends are and such and try and at least bring more content to the game that users would be happy to see. After all, this is what the current most successful MMO on the internet, Final Fantasy XIV, is doing. And I don't care what all of you say out there. Well, Steel has more subscribed. Yeah, subscribers that don't play anymore. Subscribers that don't play any subscribers that don't play anymore, and a and a game design that is too that is too hard for its own good. Yeah, right now, my argument is and always will be that if it comes to MMOs, the most successful currently is Final Fantasy fourteen. This could change in the future. For all I know, Lost Ark could, could get an update on the Korean side that we would only take six months to see instead of four years to see, and all of a sudden Lost Ark becomes the most successful MMO currently. There's a reason I use the word operative word currently. I do think when it comes to MMOs down the road, it's you're going to see you're starting to see this and it's and you're gonna be I think you're gonna be seeing this going forward. You know how, um, with the current fighting game scene, it's not all roads lead to Street Fighter like it was like it was in years past, where Street Fighter was basically holding everything up like Atlas. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas nowadays you've got multiple avenues holding the, holding the fort. Avenues that a lot of people didn't used to care about either. I mean, Arxis, Arxis only really started getting mainstream in like the last five years, six years, five or six. I'd say th I'd say the real accelerant was Dragon Ball Fighters, which I knew from the get go that was going to blow things out of the water. Yeah, and you know, Dragon Ball Fighters was. 2018, yeah, that was the accelerant. That was absolutely the accelerant. Um, but even as far back as 2016, we started seeing more and more interest on a mainstream level in Arxis games. And because of that, we've gotten some of the best Arxis games recently of all time. Thank you, Guilty Gear, Nine, Revelator, Revelator 2, and Strive. And I am looking. I'm looking forward to DNF Duel. DNF Duel. Um, the bait, there was a beta this weekend. It looks like it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but get, but getting back, getting back on, to, getting back onto things. Um, I do get the feeling that AGS is going to be used as a running joke among game developers for the next ten years. You know, kind of I like mean... how we make, kind of like how Stadia has become. Not actually, not not how Stadia has become a, has become a pejorative. How <clears throat> the Ouya became a pejorative, and actu and in actuality, um, one could one could easily say that that Amazon's little stunts are akin to the Ouya with a bigger budget. Um. Okay, that's a little bit too harsh. Um, on the Ouya, maybe. <laughs> the Ouya was ambitious because they wanted, they truly wanted to do something. They had a vision. And they wanted to execute it, and it they just didn't support it in the right fashion, mm -hmm. and that was really the failure of the Ouya. This is they had ambition and supported it the only way they knew how, the only way Amazon has ever supported anything, throw money at it. <laughs> Little different <laughs> because that works, so, and that's the reason why I brought up um, sports franchises earlier on. Mm hmm Because that's worked so well for them. And whenever I bring that kind of thing up, some I inevitably have somebody say, What about the Rangers and what about the New York Rangers in ninety four? Yeah, what, about what have the New York Rangers done since? Aside from get embarrassingly butthurt over over somebody T posing. Wait, what? <laughs> What is this bullshit I'm just now hearing? What? <laughs> Do extrapolate. Um. Basically, one of one of the players for Washington had um had had. He's a he's a defenseman, which mm -hmm. means it is which means it is his job to make to make life a living hell for any for anybody on the opposition who has the puck. Mm -hmm. You know, standard fare. I've been down this road. Well, um, he made a few. He's made a few hits that could be considered dirty, and the New York Rangers put out a official statement condemning him. And short, and around the same time, there's this image of him almost t posing, and people put two and two together. Ah. <laughs> uh... Remember, t pose to assert dominance. Yep. But I think we've I think we've more than belabored the point. This was definitely a shorter entry, but one that I wanted to do because of how fascinating the comedy of errors was. And you know how much I love a comedy of errors in real time. Yep. You know, it's like a car crash except nobody dies. Except for those who die of cringe. <laughs> yeah, but good luck trying to explain that to your insurance provider. <laughs> Dies of cringe. <laughs> your insurance provider would die of cringe. Well, maybe maybe, maybe the HMO can, can label that as a double suicide. <laughs> uh, oh, we're bad, bad people. Yes, we are. <laughs> and if anybody says that we're going to hell for the for these kind of jokes, all I say is 
Good. Then Satan can pay the money he owes me. You know he won't. He never will. He's the prince of lies. Oh, I know. Which is the reason I'm not. Which is the reason I'm gonna get. I'd probably get kicked out of hell because because I'd end up going. I'd end up barging into the gates, going, "Where's my goddamn money?" By hook or by crook, you'll get your pound of flesh, maybe even literally. Oh, I oh definitely. <laughs> uh, but with but with that said, that is going to do it for this particular episode of Geek Watch. We will be back here next week with something with something just as interesting and is going to be a case where a certain man in sunglasses will have to show up otherwise he's going to hear no end of it from me. Uh-huh. I will drag him on if I have to. Mm -hmm. I'll do it with my mind powers. You better not you better not show up trying to do an impression of Mentok the Mind Taker. Oh, come on, Monk. That's a reference only you would get. It wouldn't even... Shades wouldn't even bat an eye. If it's, if it's gonna annoy Shades, it'll have to be someone else. It'll still annoy you, though. It'll be both. <laughs> well, you've got that down to an art form anyways. <laughs> and yet, I'm still here. <laughs> But, and of course, I will have a few interviews, including one that including one that I had to play kick the can a couple a couple times, as well as the, as well as a few returning faces. But that is a story for another time. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.